this is the time and the season when we all get excited about the precious gift the only gift that was given to this planet blue planet the human planet earth the gift directly from heaven and this is the season when we just keep meditating and thinking about the virgin birth and this is a time when all of us small kids get excited about reindeer the rudolph frosty the snowman and santa claus from north pole coming to give us some kind of a gift last year alone according to the statistics 460 billion dollar was spent from the black friday all the way up to january 1st most of them a chunk of them to do with all this christmas shopping and yet after world do not know the real meaning the life and what jesus christ could do to each and every one of our life so it's it's good for us to get prepared anyway in whatever the way it's possible if it's a matter of getting excited as soon as the thanksgiving is over go to the basement or get up put the ladder and get up on the attic and get that old christmas tree that has been sitting there for almost a year now bring it down and take a few hours moments and connect them hook them and lighten them and do whatever the kind of excitement we need to have to get prepared to receive to get closer to feel the presence to enjoy being in the company of Jesus Christ but i think it's time for us to turn a few moments away from all the plastics to the purpose it is time for us to turn away from the stuff when i was studying in the university of pune i'm talking about 1981 in the sociology department one professor made one this statement that stuck with me forever when we were studying about different cultures and when we were studying about how the culture drives the economy the engine when he was talking about that western culture he made this one single statement the western civilization will come to a point where it will get choked on its own materialism and how true it is open up the closet things fall on you open the garage there is no place for you to put another stuff in there we need to have another extra shed built in there stuff keep coming and coming and coming and in this country and especially true so during christmas i haven't worn a couple of shirts beautiful shirts given to me last christmas yet it's still lying there so before we get clogged with the stuff we need to look on the sacrifice before we get hooked on to all these different gizmos and gadgets and the toys we need to get down to the truth so how can we do that in the book of revelation she studied so wonderfully to go and see jesus face to face Isn't that what Christmas is all about? What happened 2000 years ago is not going to repeat again. We are not going to go to Bethlehem and see Jesus. I have been there last October. I have been to the Nativity Church. I have been to the Greta the cave where they have got a big star, star of David where they see Jesus was born. I have been to those places. but we need to look to have lot more and we need to get ourselves prepared if we have to see jesus and to receive the gift 
I think it needs an extraordinary preparation. And this leads me to the event that happened so many years ago, and especially to one single man, Joseph. He is very unique because he was the first one to feel the flesh of the truth. He was the first one to feel the word in flesh. He was the first one to catch the baby of Jesus. The gift all the way unadulterated came in abundance. It just came to us. He was the one who first felt that Jesus. The gift from heaven. What makes him so special that he was given that kind of an opportunity? Why did God select him? What is so unique about him? He was just one of another Jewish man. You know, looking back into the socio-cultural and the political ethos or the climate and the condition in which God has to deliver this promise. He cannot make any mistake about the person, about the place, about the situation, about the condition where he is about to deliver this gift and the gift that has to perform certain duties. He has to accomplish a goal that is set from heaven. God cannot be wrong. It is to be very meticulously calculated, precisional act where nothing can go wrong. There were people waiting, waiting not to receive Jesus even though it was prophesied many years ago. So it was told in stories continually again and again about the king who would come to this year. There were many who were prepared to block is coming. Kings, prophets, even the people in temple of Jerusalem. So God Almighty from heaven, he has to work it out in such a way. That's why when somebody tells me, when I hear these Christmas stories, when they tell me, oh, he did not have room in the inn. If God would have just had in his mind that he wanted to be born in a very, very, very posh hotel, a motel, a place, he would have opened the mind, he would have spoken to the person who owned that place and he would have told him, hey, my son needs a place, open the door. God chose the manger. He wanted it just that way. And he just wanted Joseph, the first one, to feel the baby, touch the baby. Why? We, to understand a little bit more, we go to where it all started. In the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18, with after that genealogy explanation about so many generations and trying to establish as Matthew always done because he is writing to the Jewish writers. You want to make sure that it, it is all genealogically explained properly and it comes to verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was this wise. When his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph, this is where we just learned the very first characteristic of Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, okay? Now, this news is just not a simple wise news. Living in the whole deeply seated Eastern culture, somebody getting pregnant even before was married, was just not an ordinary news. You know, according to the current American statistics, you know, this is just like become another news all the time. You know, young uh, teenagers getting pregnant and, and, you know, this is a news of the day. 
But to that society, it was not a news. It was like an earthquake. Maybe 8.5 richer scale. All combined together with tsunami. It is a disaster in the society for the person and the society and the community and the family, everybody put together. Now also we know historically that after she was conceived by the Holy Ghost, it was very natural. She, instead of even telling Joseph to whom she was engaged, she runs away with joy and happiness to her cousin Elizabeth because she also was conceived after long years. It was a miraculous happening. So here she, she goes there and I believe she stays almost for about three months with Elizabeth. So when she comes back to Joseph, she was already three months pregnant. And of course the kind of clothing that they wear, the conservative dress that they had, it was not very obvious that she was pregnant. But Mary, when she comes and shares the news with Joseph, the tremendous man he was, he could have become very impulsive. He could have become very angry. He could have just reacted to her in a typical Indian way. Slap her on the face or kick her, whatever, you know. I'm talking about the current movie trends in India. Okay. But instead, he held back all these humanistic impulses. And it says, first thing we need to learn is that this man is a teachable and a pliable man. He had the heart of a man who can receive teaching. He was not so legalistically set on like how every other Jewish man was. Eye for an eye. You have committed adultery, you have become pregnant even before you got married. And especially stoned by the whom? The, the first person who cast the stone probably would have been Joseph. And in fact, many of them say that they revoked this law again and again, looking for a chance so they could stone and they could reestablish this law of Moses in the society. But Joseph, no. He was a man with a teachable and a pliable heart, number one, to understand, to see Jesus. You know what we get stuck upon? Very high legalistic, legal situations and conditions. This has to be this way. One has to do this way. One has to do this way. You have to have the Holy Spirit working in you to teach you. You should be willing to be learning. You should be able to adapt and adjust. So number one, we have learned is that he has been a very good man of a good heart, teachable heart and a pliable heart. And then of course, still, he still had this confrontation over the night. He was very worried, just like anybody else would be, thinking all different things, how to handle this situation, what can I do? And he being a just man, he wanted to put away privily without making a big fuss, without really complicating the situation, stirring the pool. So the second thing we need to know is that he was a man who was overflowing with a lot of love in his heart for Mary. So God did not make a mistake. He was a man who was, who was seasoned with love that he can just decide something which should not hurt her. Even, even the slightest and the smallest of a feeling. And of course, God answered his prayer and let him know that this is a holy child from Holy Ghost and he has to name the God Jesus and this child has the power to save this whole universe. So second, he has a man who had a lot of love in a relationship. Standing, stepping beyond, far ahead, bending backwards, you know. Are you able to give 99% to the other person and we are able to hold on maybe just a little, one single little percent? Are you able to 
uh, really do far beyond and more than what is just called for in an ordinary. Joseph he exhibits that kind of a wonderful love for Mary that he just does not proceed with real strong hard things that will hurt her. And of course, then according to the word, he is also, by trial he was thought on these things. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou the son of David, fear not, take, fear not to take unto thee Mary the wife, for which is conceived is her of Holy Ghost. Okay? And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people and his sins. So next thing happens is he happened to be a man who just listens to God. They told him, as soon as he came to know that the truth, he went ahead and gets married to her to avoid all. There is a little controversy between the way the Luke writes and the way uh, Matthew writes because they are not sure whether Mary and Joseph was married. But according to Matthew, we can say that they both were married. He just did this contrary to what the social situation would be. He went ahead and to put an extra insulation, an extra protection around Mary through marriage. So he seemed to be a man of obedience. And he is able to step up. He is able to stand up. He is able to do things very differently than what anybody else would. Because God told him, he gave him a command and he just obeyed. To, to see Jesus this season, if you need to get closer to him, if you really need to feel the presence, we just need to have all these elements all these qualities, all these characteristics. Because this comes from a man who has seen, who has felt the presence, who has felt and touched the gift. So, obedience is very, very important. Now, we come a little further. He seemed to be a man who is, according to Matthew one twenty five, and Joseph being raised from the, Matthew verse one, chapter uh, 1, verses 25. And Joseph being raised from the, did as the angel of the Lord had bid him, and he took unto him his wife, that's Mary, and he knew her not till she has brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. What a tremendous responsibility on Joseph to be married, staying with her for close to more than six months till the baby was delivered, not to defile her in any way because the Lord has told him. He showed a tremendous amount of abstinence, showed tremendous amount of patience. He's being just like a man with emotions and feelings, but he was able to just obey and hold on to that promise with a lot of patience. So, that's another characteristic that we need to learn. When we obey, when Lord says, we need to follow and keep away from certain things, do we have the nerve and the courage and the strength and the patience to keep away from sin? Are we able to really hold on to that promise and continue till we really receive the gift? Now another characteristic that comes out when we read this story, that is of course uh, in the book of Luke. 
He is a man who seems to be obeying, he obeys the laws. Joseph seemed to be a man who obeys the laws. As we know that, uh, according to uh, Caesar's uh, a degree, that they are supposed to go and count themselves as uh, census, part of census. I was there actually, as I told you, in the month of October. It took us almost about 40 minutes come from, from Jerusalem, go up to Nazareth. And Bethlehem is a few more kilometers up uh, in uh, up close to Jerusalem. And when you look out of the bus, the road is tremendously treacherous. And you can see some nomadic people over there and Bedouins having their, uh, you know, flock of sheep. Other than the, ro other than the road where, you, where the bus goes, it is just barren. It's so up and down. It's so hilly. And even when we went all the way to Nazareth, when we parked our uh, vehicle, many in our bus would not want to come and see the Church of Ascension simply because they said it's too far us, for us to climb. It was built on a hill. All I'm trying to say is that 47 kilometers, almost a distance from here to Baltimore, to do at that time when she was in a in her final um, month, about to deliver the baby, it is something that humanly inconceivable. That is something that medically we cannot understand and explain. You know, sometimes in this martial arts, they have uh, they give uh, a balloon and they put some uh, uh, soap on top of it and then give the eraser and ask people to shave off the. Uh, off that uh, soap, off of that balloon. It is like carrying that baby on a basket of thorn. It's like blowing up a balloon, carrying, putting it on the, on the, on the, on the thorny basket and moving from one place to another. But of course, we know from the scriptures that the angels were with them but an extraordinary amount of preparation went on the side of Joseph to make all the minute details of planning and then able to just uh, saddle her and then able to get her all the way up to Bethlehem. So he was a man who really believed in the gift. He wanted to make sure everything was done to the, to the highest of his ability surrender himself completely and finally able to have that Jesus, you know, deliver in Bethlehem and see the baby face to face. What a wonderful blessing that is and the lessons that we have learned today. If you really wanted to see Jesus this Christmas, we need to have the heart of Joseph. We really need to have that sincere, pliable, and teachable heart. We really need to have that heart overflowing with season love for each and every one of us that we see and confront and we meet with day after day within the family, out of the family, in the society, in the community, in the workplace, wherever it may be. We should be able to have that much amount of love. And as Peter Marshall would say that during the Christmas season, I just pray that People will be overflowing with joy coming from their heart. You should be a man of obedience, able to listen to the word that has come to you and able to follow all the way through. A man who is able to keep the law and more than that, take possession of the truth that is given to us. And if it is so, this Christmas season, we sure will see Jesus. And I am hoping that I'll be able to shift my attention all the way from the tints and the, the tinkles and all the decorations and all the external paraplegia that goes on. And I will be able to really see Jesus heart to heart. Thank you very much.